Hi, welcome to Think Tech. We're raising public awareness about technology, energy, diversity, and globalism. This show is center stage. I'm your host, Donna Blanchard, proud managing director of Kumukuhua Theater. And we are coming to you live from Pioneer Plaza in the heart of downtown Honolulu, very near Kumukuhua Theater. I'm excited to tell you that today I am talking with a, an ilk of artists with whom I have never spoken on the show before. We are talking to someone who is a cosplay artist, Miss Grace Chi. Welcome to the show. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I know nothing about the world of cosplay. <laughs> uh, I'm strictly looking at it from an outsider's perspective and nothing makes me feel older. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I have to tell you, I can play Pokemon Go, I can uh -huh. get into that. But when I, you know, I look on Facebook and, and um, Snapchat at uh, the different costumes and, and what you are doing, I think I have, this does not resonate with me in any way whatsoever. I have to learn more about this. So thank you for being here. Of course. <laughs> so look at this picture we got here. Ka ah, Kamikaze. Kamikaze. So what is this? <laughs> okay, so this one's actually really interesting because it's, a little bit more than just cosplay. This one is um, by Sam Campos. He's a local comic book artist, but he also does like TV shows. So this is one of his um, TV shows that's coming out. He's like developing it. He's done um, a different show, and now there's this one, which is Kamikaze, and it's based off of um, kind of like old. Japanese shows where you have like Hikaida and like Power Rangers, like those masked characters. Okay, yeah. So they're like tokusatsu. That's what the genre is. And I actually brought that helmet today with me. Awesome, um, let's see. see. It? Um, <laughs> so Sam is an amazing artist as well. He makes these by himself. Um, oh, wow. And the great thing about these is he makes it out of recycled material. <laughs> so this is like a bicycle helmet, um, bike reflectors straws from McDonald's, um, <laughs> like an old Iron Man mask from like a kid's toy and like foam. And he just like puts it all together and makes these amazing costumes. So the sh y so you're part of the show. OK, now when you yeah. said Power Rangers, because <laughs> I used to babysit kids <laughs> with a bunch of Power Rangers. Um, uh, so this is a show that's produced for a television channel here, or is it um, web-based? I think right now it's just web-based. You can find him on YouTube, I believe. Um, just look up Common Kaze. He's on Facebook too. Oh, um, okay. And we're just we just did some preliminary stuff. He has like a comic book, um, but hopefully we'll do more with that. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> so in the photo that the, the photo that we saw is more like a press photo. It's not. Yeah. Like live. You are you playing um, a character? In we the did do a little bit of filming. And this is from the film. Um, I think we just put out like a little teaser so far, and that's what this is for. So okay. you'll see it in the teaser. I, it's a good tease. I, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. It makes me say, well, you know, not that I'm that old, but, uh, you know, like the old Flash Gordon, that the costumes were not, you know, the latex heavy, mm -hmm. what you see in Star Wars, but right. they were, um, it, it was more about plot. It was more plot driven, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Um, so that looks like a lot of fun yeah. to do. So let's go back. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, let's go back to how you began with this. How oh, old? Okay. Yeah. Were you an avid comic book reader when you were young? Um, not like a comic book, comic book as most people would think of it. I did a lot more like manga and like anime, and I grew up with like cartoons on Saturday mornings, and that's kind of how I got into it. So I actually okay. started with cosplay in college. Um, there was an anime club at my college, and one of the guys that ran the club was like, oh, we should go to this convention. It's like not that far. And it ended up being really far. And we're like, where are we going? <laughs> but we went there, and it's amazing, because everyone's like in costume. You see other people that love the things you love, like the shows and fandoms and stuff. So after that event, um, I decided I should make a costume <laughs> and then go to the next convention. So I did that. And that was um, 2008. Oh, not that long ago. Yeah. Um, OK, so you had a, a, the club mm -hmm. was the club would get together and look at the different comics and. Oh, so it was an anime club. So we would just yeah. kind of like keep up with new anime, watch different shows together. 
Oh. Um, but that kind of branched into the cosplay because cosplay is costume play. It's more like, it's more Japanese when you get down to the roots of it. So it, oh. it was kind of a very like good start for me to be from the anime side and then get into it. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's kind of like um, in generations, bygone generations, <laughs> standing around the water cooler talking about what's going on on Dallas and um, you know those television Melrose Place. Oh yeah, Let's kind just of. say, okay. So, but you're getting together in a, a formal club mm -hmm. to to do that. Okay, and then the guy says, "Let's go down to this convention." And you saw uh, these conventions like Comic Con. Mm -hmm. and, uh, okay, this intrigues <laughs> me because is it a lot of people there selling something? Yeah, it's actually really neat. So when you go to these conventions, there are people that are selling things. There are artists that bring their art and prints and you can buy them. They always bring like celebrity guests. You can meet voice actors, actors from TV, movies. Um, they just had like George Takei come and mm. stuff like that. Um, but another part is all the cosplayers. People really like to dress up as characters and go to these conventions. And usually they do it based on who's coming to the convention so they can meet their favorite actor as that character or someone from that show. And that's really cool because you can take pictures with them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that must be amazing for the actors mm -hmm. to see all of these people yeah. emulating their characters. Okay, so you started with, you went to the first one and then mm -hmm. you decided you, and you had no costume. Yep. And <laughs> do you feel weird going if you have no, for those who are interested um, in giving it a shot? No, I mean, you don't have to be in costume to go. A lot of people like to because you feel comfortable in costume in a convention, whereas like, somewhere out on the street, it would be kind of strange, maybe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> unless you're on Frontier Street in Las Vegas, mm -hmm. then you see. <laughs> or maybe downtown. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, OK, so but you, yeah, you can go check it out. Do you, is it more comfortable when you're in costume because you feel like you're not really you? Yeah, um, I think I have more fun when I'm in costume. Um, people like will yell at you from across the hall, be like, hey, that girl, or something. You're like, wait. Me like That's you. this this Batgirl or that one? <laughs> and then do you react like Batgirl? Do you? Oh yeah, sometimes it's fun to be in character. <laughs> <laughs> this is why we get on stage. Mm -hmm. It's <laughs> fun to explore something different. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so you by the time you, uh, you the next one rolled around, and were you mm -hmm. living here in Hawaii? At the oh, time? that was in Chicago. So oh. I started out um, going to Anime Central or ASIN. That's the big one in Chicago. Okay. Um, but in 2010, I came back to Hawaii, and that's when I like really started picking up with the cosplay. Because I came back, and Kauai Con was huge after being gone for 10 years. <laughs> or like, like I had come back, and Kauai Con was huge. I think it started, oh, when was that? I think like early 2000 or so. So it had only been like a few years of me being away. But Kauai Con, from when I had first started seeing it, like, I went to the very first one. Got much one. bigger. It was huge. The first one I went to was at Alamana Hotel. And it was just, like, a couple tables and, like, a few people. And I was like, oh, what is this? And then I came back, and it was, like, gigantic in the convention center. And there were, like, thousands of people. Oh. <laughs> what is Kauai Con? What's the breakdown on that? OK, so Kauai Con is more um, anime-based, so opposed to, like, Comic-Con, which is more comic-based. OK. Mm -hmm. The, but the actual word, ka kawaii? Oh, ka yeah. Kawaii is like a Japanese word for cute. <laughs> oh. So I think it fits. It's like kawaii yeah. and kan. They use it with a K. It's like a alliteration thing, but it's... K-A-W... Oh, no. K-O-N. Like... Kawaii. Convention, but with a K, like kan. Oh. <laughs> the first... The, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, okay, so you, but the first time you dressed up as a character, was that in Chicago or when you yeah, came back Yeah, that was here? in Chicago. And what did you do? Um, I did Tifa from Final Fantasy Advent Children. And was that invo an involved oh, yeah, kind full of. body thing? <laughs> did you go out and buy a costume or did you set about making it all yourself? Uh, so that one was a mix. Um, 
I went and bought certain things, like I bought pants and I bought this vest and stuff, but I ended up having to hand sew a lot of stuff because I was still in college and at the dorms. I'm like in my room like, eh, like how do I do this? <laughs> Had you, did you know how to sew before the necessity of making your own costume? Um, a little bit uh, because I learned some of that from my mom. Uh, my mom does like her own t-shirts and jackets and stuff. Um, oh. She's she's always done it like as far as I've known. She's done fashion and made her own clothing. Um, oh wow! But I never really got into it until the cosplay. And I think once I did, she started being like, "Oh yay! I bet. Like you can learn stuff from me." <laughs> yeah, I bet she was thinking, "I don't know what you're. I don't understand why, but I love it." Okay, this is your Batgirl costume. Yes. And I remember seeing. Um, on Facebook, there there was a lot of evolution. Talk about there were some oh, things yeah. that you were waiting to come in, but then you built mm -hmm. you built the mask, didn't you? Oh, the mask I bought. Okay. Um, some cosplayers will commission things from other prop makers. Um, so this one was from Reeves FX. <laughs> um, okay. I'm not sure where he is. He's on the mainland, but he makes Batgirl cowls and Batman masks and all kinds of crazy stuff. Um, but that's one that I bought from him, and I cut the chin strap off. It was so nerve-wracking. I was like, oh, please don't mess this up. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but um, everything else, I pretty much made myself. Um, Look at that. And yeah. then you, uh, OK, so these are wonderful photographs that we have of this, too. Is that, mm -hmm. a, that is a part of the cosplay that you are photographed? Yes, so um, a great thing about cosplay is that you get to meet all these great people, um, not only other cosplayers, but a lot of photographers, makeup artists, prop makers. And I've met a lot of great photographers on the island. It's like you have like your small group, you always ask like, oh, you want to take photos this weekend? <laughs> and they're like always up for it. Um, it's just we do it for fun. No one gets paid. We just go out and shoot and have fun. And then you have these amazing... Yeah. Photos. That's cute. That one's Look at how amazing because you are. it's actually shot on film. It's not digital. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> this, that, but that's not Catwoman. That's not Batgirl. That's that is Batgirl. And I actually brought that one with oh. me, too. Oh, okay. Um, oop. Let's get so this, one. this was a nightmare to make. <laughs> you it make looks this. simple, but it oh, was a lot terrible. <laughs> Um, so a lot of times when you make a cosplay, you run into things that you didn't think would be difficult. <laughs> like patterning, patterning this out wasn't too bad because I just used um, like an aviator cap and I made the pattern. So it just looks like an aviator cap, but with these Batgirl ears. And um, <laughs> the thing that was difficult about this was the leather. So I was kind of stubborn and I was like, I'm going to go all out and make this legit and I bought like leather pants to cut up to put leather, and that's this light purple part. But the thing about leather is it's really difficult to sew. Yeah. <laughs> so I think I broke about two needles making this. You were doing this by hand? Um, no, I used the machine. You used the machine. Yeah, that makes but sense. But you'll like sew it, and it's just like you hear a crunch, and you're better. like, no. <laughs> oh, okay, we're going to go to our first break okay. real quick here. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk more about this. Mm -hmm. I like the steampunk. Yeah. Um, part of that also. Okay, we're going to take a break. <laughs> we're going to come right back because you need to come back and learn more about cosplay. We'll be right back on Center Stage. Aloha, everyone. I'm Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on ThinkTech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We are here to talk about news, issues, and events local and around the world. Join me. Aloha. Hi, I'm Stephen Philip Katz. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist here in Hawaii, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap Hawaii, which is on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock. Have a great summit. Take care of your mental health. Aloha. I'm Chantel Seville, host of the Savvy Chick Show on Think Tech Hawaii. This show is for you. It's all about inspiring and empowering girls of the future to do what they love, get out there, and be healthy, fit, and confident. If you're up for that, 11 a.m. every Wednesday, I'll see you there. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham with The Economy and You, and I'd like to invite you each week to come watch my show each Wednesday at 3 p.m. 
Hi, we're back on Center Stage on the Think Tech Hawaii Digital Network. I just want to let you know if you would ever like to join us in our studio here downtown in Honolulu at the Pioneer Plaza, you may do so. Just email Jay, that's J-A-Y at thinktechhawaii.com, and he will hook you up. And we're always happy to hear your um, feedback on the show. You can reach us, you can tweet us at thinktechhi, uh, and you can also always send me a message. I'm at Facebook. Dot, no, Facebook slash Donna dot Blanchard. Okay. Okay, so this costume, um, you wanted to build, What you, you already had the Batgirl mask, you felt like you needed to make another one? Oh, uh, yeah. So this one is actually based off of Aunt Lucia's work. Um, he does the DC, DC bombshells, um, which is like a World War II variation on the DC characters. Oh, so he can do that? It's legal? Um, I think they contacted him and contracted him to do a series. Oh, so he okay. actually has a comic book series for it now. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, because I, ne I never realized before that you would want, y you might want to dress up as variations of one character. You all, you have several characters. Oh, yeah. That you did. <laughs> Plus, you have a variation on her. Okay, mm -hmm. because her personality is slightly different. Um, or this one I just like the character design. Oh. Uh. She okay. has this really cute, like, parachuter outfit. <laughs> so um, the cape is actually, like, the parachute that comes out of her bag and stuff. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Nice. And this is this meant to be... Was this part of the drawing, the more steampunk look? Or is yeah, that... Yeah. Uh -huh. So because it's more, like, World War II era, um, it pulls a lot from that, but also kind of, like, steampunky. Not quite, really. It's got a lot of, like, um, I guess, like, corsets and stuff within the work and that's yeah. really cool yeah <laughs> yeah okay so and and this jacket is part of this one is yeah. from um the n not newest batgirl but the last iteration which i guess still carries over um by babs tar and that crew <laughs> oh mm -hmm. another iteration of her and here's yeah. some oh some progress here's the making yeah <laughs> how long did it take to do this Altogether. This one, so I bought the jacket as a base, and then I had to put on the bat. And it was a little tricky because I had to work around the zipper, so you yeah. can see me trying to like place it, and then I had to cut the bat, which is actually two pieces of fabric and not just one, um, and then I sewed it on. Uh. Uh, okay, D is the jacket something that you got the, the jacket just looked like the right thing to do yeah. to use as so your base. So a lot of the times, if something's more complicated, it's worth it to just buy something that already exists as mm -hmm. a base and then work off of that. So you can do like alterations to it. Like I took off the cuffs, and um, I think I brought it in a bit in the back and stuff. So um, it's a lot easier than trying to build up a jacket from scratch sometimes. Yeah, and also, it's yeah. like a time thing. Jackets are hard. This is a lot yeah. of work. You don't want to be doing all of that. You need to save your time for this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so how many full costumes have you? Ooh. do you have? I was trying to do a count before this show. <laughs> um, I think it's about 50, probably more. Holy Toledo, really? Yeah. <laughs> Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're coming up with a new one. You're not that old. You're coming up with a new one every couple of months. Oh, yeah. It's been a lot crazier, especially in the past year or so, because we've had so many new conventions in Hawaii. Um, yeah. And I don't always want to, but I usually end up making something new for each convention. <laughs> well, well, yeah, you can't wear the same dress twice. Right. Right. <laughs> um, uh, oh, okay, and all of the characters that you are building are based on something you've seen before. These are not something that you are inventing. Um, most of them. Um, oh. A lot of the time, I'll do something that exists either as like an actual like character or fan art. A lot of people out there will make fan art based off of a character and put their own twist on it, or they'll like mash up two characters. We've done like Disney Star Wars mashups where we take Disney characters but give them lightsabers and make them more like tunics oh. and stuff. I would really uh -huh. like to see some of the Disney princesses with lightsabers. Yeah, we've done that. We had like someone do Princess Jasmine with a lightsaber. <laughs> and 
I hey. like that empowering the Disney princesses. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> the older ones, the newer ones are being are, oh, yeah. empowered mm -hmm. themselves. But yeah, we need to give some <laughs> some other than fairies to right. Sleeping Beauty. You know. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so here's what I'm hearing is that this the a lot of the building that you're doing this this is really big hobby. Mm -hmm. This is a lot of time that's going oh, in yeah. there. But it has it, it's a a a, a good probably way to relax at home. You go oh, home and yeah. you work on this. But then it has a huge social aspect to it. Yeah, because you're always going out, meeting new people, trying to plan photo shoots, going to the conventions. Um, it can get crazy. Sometimes you have to take a break. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Yeah. So those photo shoots, some mm -hmm. really great images come out of that. And then mm -hmm. what are you doing with them other than, you know, showing um, them here and on Facebook? I mostly just share them on Facebook. Um, Sometimes it actually helps us along with other things. Um, people will contact us out of the blue for events um, to like volunteer for something. A lot of us do volunteering at like children's events or um, like fundraisers and stuff. Um, one of the groups I'm in is the Avengers Mid Pacific, which is the Hawaii chapter of a larger Marvel costuming group that's nationwide, um, and we can get hired out to be at events, so like um, heart walks or movie appearances, mm. things like that. Oh, so I could hire your group to come out and be at my fundraiser. Yes, fundraiser. you could. I love <laughs> these costumes. Ah, okay, so those are not are those those are not part of anime. They look like Jurassic Park. Yeah, so like those two guys on the left are my good friends. They dress up as Ghostbusters, as Jurassic Park guys, and they're amazing. I love them. <laughs> this is at one of the conventions. Uh, yes. Um, but the great thing about this picture is that our costumes are made out of cardboard, and it doesn't really matter. Like, you can cosplay out of anything and make it work. I think that was like the most popular costume at that convention, and it was like cardboard and googly eyes from Amazon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's awesome. Okay, so that was part from a movie. Are there still people who will go to the convention, even though it's Comic Con? There are people who will go there dressed as something from Star Wars or oh, yeah. Jurassic Park. Mm -hmm. It doesn't really matter. You'll have like comic characters at anime conventions and vice versa. It's just a place where you can go and be comfortable being who you are or not who you are. <laughs> that's what, yeah, be, well, yeah. yeah, showing off your hobby being mm -hmm. not who you are. Right. That's like Halloween uh, several yeah, times a year. all the time. <laughs> no wonder you like it. Now I get it. <laughs> not sure I'm going to do it right away because mm. I'm not sure who I would play. Maybe. Who's the wicked witch from oh. the, the, mer no, mer the Little Mermaid? Oh. That is an awesome character. That would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen someone do an amazing dress, and the dress oh, yeah. bottom has like tentacles sewn onto it. That's that an was really good. Character. That would be a fun one to do. Okay, all right. Now let me think about that <laughs> a little while. So, where do you do you see this merging with your business life? Oh, um. I guess in some ways it has. Um, I do a lot of like graphic design on the side and also like engineering during the day. So sometimes the engineering helps me to create something or it gives me like that mindset to pattern something out. Um, and also sometimes we'll pe people will like contact me and be like, oh, can you like make this for me or something? Oh, yeah. And so it does go both ways. Um, I ask people to make things for me. They ask me to sew stuff for them. <laughs> oh, nice. Has yeah. your mom gotten into it at all? Um, Is she helping you? Not really. I've been trying to convince her to sew things for people and sell it, because it's actually a pretty lucrative business if you can get it going. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and her daughter's in the right spot to Yep, and I can the... promote. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that anything, anytime you have an artistic avenue of expression, when you're an engineer, you mm -hmm. have an artistic avenue of expression separate from that, it, it helps you in your, your business, whatever it oh, is. Oh, yeah. 
I used to, um, when I was in the Northwest Indiana region, there's a lot of steel mills there. Mm -hmm. And some of the larger ones would give their employees an allowance for education, oh, you know, just yes. smart, right? And they would pay for guys to come and take my acting classes. Oh, awesome. These, yeah, I mean, you know, guys that are working in the steel mill, <laughs> the ceramics engineers, and all the way to, you know, the the more entry level jobs. And oh, they right. all would say they benefited from it, you know, just yeah. same as you would from playing a guitar, so you can build uh -huh. Amazing costumes like yeah. this one. What can you tell <laughs> us about her? Okay, so this is an anime based one. Um, it's from Fooly Cooly. <laughs> um, she's kind of a crazy character, and this is one of, like, closer to one of my first ones that I actually put together fully. And that bass guitar was really hard to find. It's actually like a knockoff from China because the actual one's like thousands of dollars. Oh, wow. <laughs> Um, so you bought the, an actual bass yes. to do this? Um, yeah, I in high school and college I used to play guitar a lot, so I was like, well, oh. why not? I'll get a bass guitar too, and it fit for the costume, so that worked out pretty well. I didn't know you played mm -hmm. as well. Not so much now. Not so much, because <laughs> you found another outlet to yeah. take its place. Uh -huh. So where do all of these characters live? Oh, uh, <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> So for me, everything's kind of piling up, and I'm pretty close to being like, I should sell some stuff because I just need space for new things. Um, I know people that have like storage lockers specifically for their costumes. Oh, wow. Yeah. Do you very often go back and revisit a character that you're again, like the girl with the blue base? Is she oh, gonna yeah. come back? Oh yeah, I bring her oh. out sometimes. Um, and then with all my costumes, I like say they're works in progress because I'm always upgrading them. Um, so I'll always like redo the gloves or remake pants or something. Oh, you can always improve. Look at yeah. this cheeky little. We're almost seeing some. Oh, cheeky there. <laughs> this is also from an anime, um, Kill a Kill. It's kind of a crazy anime. Um, this was a fun one, and it's a good example of using a costume for more than one thing, um, because in this anime the main character, which is not this character, wears this outfit. And there just happens to be an episode where this character steals her outfit, and so I did this character in her outfit. Oh, <laughs> nice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I really appreciate your coming down and talking about all of this. Uh -huh. I feel like I have a better understanding. Maybe I don't feel so <laughs> old. I, I can still talk about like Melrose Place, so there's that. <laughs> All right, we're gonna, while you look at the rest of the photos that we have here, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up. Thank you very much for being here, of Grace Chi. Thanks for having me. Thank you, our audience, for tuning in. I would also like to thank a few more people here in the studio. Rich Prepus, our floor manager, who's right over there. Thank you, Rich. <laughs> Zuri Bender, our studio overlord, who is in my ear. Thank you, Zuri. And I'd also like to thank Jay Fidel, who somehow manages to put all of this together. We will see you next week on Center Stage. <laughs>